Hello everyone, welcome to today's tutorial. I'm excited to show you how to build a cylindrical 3D manipulator using OpenModelka. Modelka is an open source, object-oriented, equation-based language well suited for mathematically modeling and simulating complex physical systems across multiple domains. Our main objectives for today are to simulate a cylindrical robot that can perform linear maneuvers in two linear axis and one circular axis, to start simulating one axis at a time and keep on adding the next axis, and to choose an appropriate range of linear y and z and angular motion about z limits. Here is an example of the robot we'll be working with. As we can see, the robot consists of two types of joints, one cylindrical and one prismatic. Let's implement this robot in Modelka. Now let's move on to open Modelka and open OM Edit GUI. Here's what the OM Edit interface looks like. On the left side, you can see different types of packages and libraries available. The one we're interested in is the Modelka library here. On the right side, you'll find the documentation. This area provides descriptions of different models within a package. Let's start off by creating our first model. At the top of the screen, you'll see a file menu. If you click on it, there's going to be appear a drop-down menu of various options. You click on New, choose New Modelica class, and a pop-up window will appear where you'll need to enter the name of your Modelica class. Let's call it Cylindrical Robot. You'll also see a section for selecting the specialization of your class. Choose model from the option provided. It's a standard and so we're gonna be chosen as model. But to give a little context, there are three most used specializations in Modelka. A model in Modelka represents a mathematical description of a physical system or component of that system. It captures the dynamic behavior of the system, enabling simulations to predict how the system will respond under various conditions. A connected class defines the interface for connecting different components. It specifies the types of variables that can be shared between models. A package is used to organize and encapsulate related models, connectors, functions, and other packages. It serves as a namespace helping to structure complex projects and avoid naming conflicts. Click OK. Now we have successfully created our first model, Cylindrical Robot. Now it's set up and ready for further development. Now, on the left side of the screen, alongside the libraries, you'll see our model represented with a blue icon labeled Cylindrical Robot. In the center of the screen, you'll notice an empty white square. This is the diagram view where we'll build and visualize our model. We'll also have the option to switch to the text view if we need to modify or add custom parameters or equations. However, for today's tutorial, we'll be working primarily within the diagram view. On the right side of the screen, you'll find the documentation area. It now shows information specific to our cylindrical robot model. Since we're building a 3D manipulator, we'll use the multibody library in the mechanics package of Modelka. It's important to note that since we'll apply both translation and rotational motions, we'll also work closely with the corresponding libraries. Unlike traditional causal modeling, where connections have a unidirectional flow, and a causal approach allows for bidirectional flow in connectors. This flexibility is essential for accurately simulating real-world physical systems where interactions can occur in multiple directions simultaneously. For more information about Modelka or the multibody library, you can always refer to the user's guide, which contains detailed tutorials where you can learn and try it yourself. Let's start by using the world model. The world model represents a global coordinate system fixed to the ground. This model serves several purposes. Provides an inertial reference frame in which the equations of all elements of the multibody library are defined. It acts as the world frame in the animation window where all elements of the multibody library are visualized. To place the world model in our diagram, simply drag and drop it into the diagram view. Now you have successfully added the essential starting point of any multibody model. You can double click on the world model to see its core parameters. If needed, you can change settings such as gravity type or the direction of gravity resolved in the world frame. You can also have an option to disable the gravity. Additionally, you can check how the added world model changes the text view. This allows you to see the new line of code added to the model. At the top of the screen, you can find options to check the model, simulate the model, simulate using different debuggers, or simulate with animation. 
In this example, we primarily are going to use simulation with animation. Let's start by building a great plane to give ourselves a starting point for visualizing our model. We use a plane model, which can be found under the parts section as a body box. First, locate the body box model, then drag and drop it into the diagram view next to the world model. Now it's important to set parameters for the body box and connect it to the world model. Without this connection, the model wouldn't understand why there are no connections and it would result in an error. You'll notice that the body box has A and B flanges. These flanges are used to connect components together. Typically, you connect flange B of one component to flange A of another. In some cases, you might need to connect flange A to flange A for parallel connections. Let's go ahead and connect the world models flange B to the body box flange A. At this point, if you try to run this simulation, you'll encounter an error like here. This is because the vectors for the body box are not set. The parameter r is responsible for setting the position vectors. To position our plane along the x-axis, set the vector r to x-axis 1.5, y-axis to 0, and z-axis to 0 as well. With the position vector set, now click OK and run the simulation with animation. You should now see the body box with a length of 1.5 meters. To adjust the plane size, set the length, width and height parameters. When you go back to the model, you can either click on modeling or click back to the model icon on the left side. The easiest way would be by clicking the modeling to switch to the diagram view again. So if we double click the body box, we can now set the length, width and height. Let's Put 3 on that as a length, 3 as a width, and 0 0.1 meters as the height. Now if we run the simulation with animation again, this should give us a plane of the desired size. Great! This is our plane. Next, let's build a cylinder using the body cylinder model now. Let's OK back to modeling, add the diagram view, and add the body cylinder. It is right below the body box. We click and drag it like we did with the body box. Click OK. And now let's set the parameters. Let's first click, double click on the, on the model and add a position vector x0, y0, and 1.35 in z-axis. Let's set the length to 3 meters and the diameter to 0 0.3. Click OK. Do not forget to connect the flanges, B to A, and run the simulation with animation. These settings will define the size of our cylinder and the position of it in our 3D manipulator. And as we can see, it's perfectly as we want it. Now we come to the tricky part where we need to build a cylindrical joint which allows both translational and rotational motion. We will use joints such as prismatic and revolute to achieve this. Start by going to the joint section and locating a prismatic joint. Now we click and drag it to the diagram view. Click OK. Connect this joint to the cylinder. In the prismatic joints parameters, change the axis of translation N3 to 0 in X, 1 in Y, and 0 in Z. This allows for translational motion along the Y axis. Okay, next add a revolute joint, which is right below the prismatic joint. Simply click and drag it to the diagram view, click OK, and connect it after the prismatic. Now we will need to change some of the parameters to 0, 1, 0 to allow uh, a rotational motion around the y-axis. Click OK. And now we've replicated a cylindrical joint, which would allow translational and rotational motion. To create a body that will be constrained around z-axis of the previous cylinder, we would need to create another body cylinder. Okay, the body cylinder, 
click and drag it to the model, sets its position in parameters R to 0, 0, 0 0.15, set length to 0 0.3 meters, diameter to 0 0.6, and inner diameter to 0 0.3. The inner diameter, in this case, it creates a hole that the other cylinder will fit through. Click OK. Connect the model. You can, you can move the whole model closer to the middle. Now, if we run the simulation, we'll see that this is actively placed there. Great. To apply a force profile or enforce the position or velocity profile to the prismatic and riveted joints, we need to first open the parameters of these joints and enable the Use Axis Flange option. This setting allows us to apply sources from the translational rotational libraries, providing more flexibility as these libraries are designed to be used together. It's also very important to know about the difference between different flanges for multi-body, translational and rotational libraries, and which now when we had a typical flange A and flange B, square, square flanges, now we've got two different types of flanges, green flanges and circle flanges. They are pretty similar, but slightly different, as they can only be connected to the flanges that are from their library. Translational to translational and rotational to rotational, similar to normal flanges. And to apply a position or velocity profiles, the source must be applied to a joint. But force can also be applied directly to the body. We will now consider motion in Z axis rather than Y axis. N as 0, 1, 0 would need to do N, 0, 0, 1 to both prismatic and revolute joints. Great. Let's start with the prismatic joint. By enabling the use axis flange parameter, we can apply translational force. For a simple sinusoidal motion that moves continuously up and down, we can use a sine wave and apply it to a position source. The sine source essentially acts as a function to define the profile for the position, velocity, or force source to apply to the joint or a body. To do this, go to the translational library, then navigate to the sources section. Here we see the position source, and let's click it and drag it to the diagram view. To find the sine wave, go to the Modelka library, find blocks, then sources, and find sine wave like source. Click and drag it to the diagram view, click OK. Let's change the sine wave parameters. Let's set the amplitude as 1.25, frequency as 0.1, click OK, connect the output of a sine wave to the input of the position, and connect to the position output to the flange B of the prismatic joint. Great, so now we can run the simulation and see how it looks like. And before we do so, let me show you how to use the simulation setup. So now, we have a simple example where we need to have our simulation to run for 10 seconds. Let's adjust the stop time from 1 to 10 seconds. Click OK. Click OK and let's run the simulation. Now we can see an up and down motion, which is a linear reciprocal motion applied by the sinusoidal position source. Let's go back to the diagram view and apply the same to the rotational joint as the process is pretty similar. Now we need to locate the rotational library where we go to sources and find the position source. Click and drag it to the diagram, click OK. And we can copy the sine wave. We can Control C and Control V. So now we've got a similar sine wave instead of just putting the same one. So we click to the input, click to the output. The only thing that would change in sine wave parameters is the amplitude. Let's put it as a pi 3.14. Okay. Now we can run the simulation again.
Great. Now we can see that our connector moves up and down and rotates. Next, we will need to connect the remaining bar to the moving cylinder. To do this, we'll add another body box and connect it to the cylinder. First, find the body box model under the parts section and drag it into the diagram view. Then to set the position vector to R, 1.77, minus 0.75 and 0. Since we are now using a direction vector beyond a single axis, we need to set the length direction vector to 1, 0, 0. This ensures that the bar doesn't tilt downwards along the z-axis by keeping the direction along the x-axis. Next, set the dimensions of the body box by configuring the lengths, widths and height parameters to 2 meters, 0.3 meters and 0.3 meters respectively. This will give us a bar that is 2 meters long and has a cross-sectional area of 0.3 meters by 0.3 meters. Now that the bar is properly configured, connected to the moving cylinder, with this setup, the bar will move in the same way as the cylinder does, following the same translational and rotational motions. Now we can run the simulation again with these changes, and you will see that the bar is moving up and down, as well as rotating in sync with the cylinder, creating a coordinated motion for our 3D manipulator. As you can see, the body moves relatively to the previous cylinder that moves translation across y-axis and rotation across z-axis. Now what's left is to build the final part that moves perpendicular to the other bar, which moves translationally. We'll start off by adding a prismatic joint. First, locate a prismatic joint and add it to the diagram view. Next, we'll need to set the direction vector in parameters n to 0, 1, 0 in y-axis. This configuration will ensure that the motion is perpendicular to the previous bar's movement. Don't forget to enable the use axe flange parameter, allowing us to apply forces and motions to this joint. Next, add a body box to represent the final moving part. Set this position vector r to 0, 1, 0. This places the body box at the correct location relative to the previous components. Configure the body box dimensions by setting the lengths, widths, and heights to 1.5 meters, 0.25 meters, and 0.5 meters, respectively. As we're running out of space, let's click at the view at the top of the screen and, and click fit to diagram. This will allow more spacing so we can readjust the body box. Let's connect the body box to the prismatic joint and prismatic joint to the previous body box connector. Now we need to apply a sine wave as well as the position source to this prismatic joint to create the desired motion. We can simply copy the position and the sign source, as we've already used those in the previous prismatic joint. Let's, let's use Ctrl C and Ctrl V to successfully copy those and connect the sign output to the input of the position too, then get the position output to the input of the prismatic joint. Now, the only thing that's left is to change the parameters in the sign. Let's change the amplitude to 0 0.75 and press OK. We can see our final 3D manipulator in Madalka. You can now run the simulation and observe that it moves in the desired directions, both freely and simultaneously. To complete the setup, Let's add some sensors to measure the position relative to the world model and between different parts of the model. In this example, we use the absolute sensor to measure the position relative to the world model and the relative sensor to measure the position relative to one of the other parts of the model. To use the absolute sensor, first we would need to locate the absolute sensor in the multi-body library under the sensor section. Drag the absolute sensor into the diagram view and connect it to any point of the body in the model. For this example, we're going to connect it to the last body box. Connect the sensor from flange B to the last body of the last body box to the input of the absolute sensor. In the parameters, we would need to enable the following options for the sensor: get R, get V, and get A. These options will allow the sensor to provide information on relative position, 
velocity and acceleration to the world model. Run the simulation and observe the absolute sensor. You should be able to see how its readings change throughout the simulation, providing insights into the position of the last body relative to the Borog model. And this is the only way how to access the dynamic states during the simulations. Now what's left is to use a relative sensor. First, we would need to locate the relative sensor under the sensor section, drag it to the diagram view and click OK. So the only difference from the relative sensor to the absolute sensor is that the absolute sensor is relative to the world frame here. But the relative sensor, we can choose what the body box here in this example would be relative to which body. So let's connect the output of the relative sensor to uh, the input of the body cylinder. Now the relative sensor is going to provide the information of the body box to relative to the body cylinder 1. So now if we run the simulation, we'll be able to see and gather information. But before we do so, we'll need to enable following options, get our rel, get v rel, and get a rel, similar to the absolute sensor. But now those are relative position, relative velocity, and relative acceleration. Click OK and run the simulation with animation. So now if we locate the relative sensor below, we will be able to read and gather values. Now you successfully built your first cylindrical 3D manipulator in Madalka. I hope you enjoyed watching this tutorial. Thank you so much for watching and follow this model channel for more.